This is Ishan Mishra as a host. Welcome you to the new episode on Law and Life. We will be extending the conversation on our last video on topic Uniform Civil Code with the renowned senior advocate of the Supreme Court of India, Subodh Markande ji. Some of the questions have been received from our last video on the same issue, in which the first question was, Why is the ad even after 72 years the mandate of Article 44 for Uniform Civil Code for the whole India has remained totally unfilled, sir? So the question raised by our viewers is uh, are very pertinent. Uh, the first question was in fact uh, posed by Chief Justice uh, Chandrachur in Shah Banu's case. He, uh, in, in effect, he said that if there was a uniform civil code in place, this case would not have arisen. Similarly, Justice O. Chinaparadi in Jordan Deagle's case and uh, Justice Kuldeep Singh in Sarla Mudgal's case raised the same question, namely, why has the Uniform Civil Code not been enacted so far? Diligent search has not yielded any result as to why up to 1973 this did not happen. Of course, it's in public domain why it uh, did not happen till 1973. You see, with the encouragement and support of the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, a body called the All India Muslim Law Board was set up with the award purpose of adopting strategies for protection and continued applicability of Muslim personal law in India, more important, most importantly, the Muslim Personal Law Sharia Act of 1937, providing for the application of the Islamic law code of Sharia to Muslims in India. So I have quoted from the object of Muslim Personal Law Board. We don't know who set them up, who, whom do they, do they represent, they are self-styled. It's all suited in mystery, but that's not the subject matter of our present discussion. Be that as it may, the object of All India Muslim Personal Law Board is directly to sabotage Article 44. Now in a scenario where the highest executive authority in the land had encouraged and supported All India Muslim Personal Law Board. It was futile to expect any forward movement for attaining the goal of enacting the Uniform Civil Court before, uh, before the Supreme Court itself, in its three judgments cited above, directed the uh, central government to enforce the mandate of Article 44. In fact, the chances of enacting uniform civil code for the whole country had receded in the aftermath of the decision of Shah Banu's case in which Supreme Court had regretted the obduracy. In that judgment itself, the Supreme Court has regretted the kind of attitude taken by All India Muslim Personal Law Board and other self-styled protectors of Muslim interests in perpetuating the myth that societal and social matters like marriage, divorce, maintenance of wives and children, <clears throat> custody, guardianship, succession, and host of other matters are sacrosanct parts of their religion, not amenable even to law made by country's sovereign parliament. Let me say this. The Sharia Act of 1937 was enacted by the British rulers on the persuasion of Mr. Muhammad Ali Jinnah. He had great clout with the British. In spite of stiff opposition by three Muslim communities, Wohras, Khojas, and Kachi Maimans, who, though converted to Islam during the reign of Emperor Aurangzeb, were governed by Hindu law for 300 years, and they had no issues, they had no problem. I don't know why Mr. Mr. Jinnah intervened and why the British government uh, obliged him. The Sharia Act is like any one of the thousands of other laws enacted by the 
uh, by the British dispensation. They are what we may call in our constitutional parlance law in force at the time when the constitution came into force. And the parliament has every power to vary, change, alter, even repeal the, uh, this uh, Sharia Act. Now, uh, it's as I said, it's a law. It's a law in force as as defined in the Constitution, which is am, amenable to uh, amendment and repeal by the Parliament. Sir, can you tell us what are the goals of Uniform Civil Code? Which issues are not negotiable in it? You see, the object of Uniform Civil Code is to bring about a complete equality in all civil matters like marriage, divorce, maintenance of spouses and children, their guardianship, custody, visiting rights, succession to property by wills or otherwise, and most of other adventitious matters throughout India. Such code must, by its very nature, transcend all diversities of religion, gender, region, section, caste, etc. But it must be consistent with the dignity of women, as enjoined by Clause E of Article 51A of the Constitution. Formality of provision and dignity of women are not negotiable. So aren't wide consolations necessary before undertaking such a difficult task? Yes. I think widest possible, but time-bound consultation, especially amongst the women's group, is absolutely essential. But that doesn't mean isn't the cut the clutter approach more appropriate? I think so. The our viewer is right. Cutting cut the clutter. I think he has borrowed he or she has borrowed this uh, <clears throat> phrase from Mr. Uh, that famous journalist Gupta's vocabulary. So, uh, as it had been suggested, this involves, amongst other things, you know, repeal of Sharia Act 1937 and <clears throat> provision that only Special Marriage Act 1956 shall apply in the cases of interfaith marriage and intercaste marriage. Uh, Therefore, I may repeat that cut the clutter is the right approach. All the more so because for the last 72 years, the Union of India has made no effort to secure for citizens uniform civil code throughout the territory of India. Besides the use of simple, straightforward and uncomplicated language is also imperative in the process of its enactment. Uh, so I will sum up when the Uniform Civil Code is enacted, logically the Sharia Act 1937 will stand it to repeat. A law providing for intercaste and interfaith marriage and consequential and incidental matters will be governed by Special Marriage Act 1956. This need not even wait for the enactment of uh, Uniform Civil Code. Uh, from my personal logic, I can say that many Muslim couples are these days, you know, opting to get married under Special Marriage Act to avoid the undesirable effects of the law. Yes, sir, that was the last question. We will end this session for now and we will see you in the next video, sir. Thank you, sir, for joining. Mm -hmm.